Evening guys and girls, how are we doing? It's a fine evening tonight, not very much rain, but let's get the uh, niceties out of the way. The new 3.0 update is due very soon, trademark by the way, uh, do not try and copyright because I will strike, whatever. And here I am discussing its new features, with some changes to some tanks to throw into the equation, but before I get into the tanks question, let's have a look at some of the new things coming through. New map variations are, are, are happening. Um, one of the, which, the ones I'll start on is, is Northwest. It's undergoing a revision to reduce some of the steep inclines for apparently balanced terms, balance purposes. Terrain is lower to the north while the southwest corner is elevated, so as in some way to stop a lot of stalemates that can occur and maybe allow both teams to reach middle as soon as. It did create a lot of stalemates in the corner, not something I was particularly fond of, and you had to wait for your team, usually in the bottom right corner if you spawned uh, down in the bottom left, to actually push up, and it was kind of boring even more so with RT, but we all know, or should, that when matchmaking decides to give one team more fast mediums than the other, the middleism or the tactically advantaged points of the map are more likely to end up in the hands of those snappy little bastards. I use the example of mines. There are plenty of times when you can have the best spawn possible to have the lowest terrain incline at all to get into the middle and be outdone by the other team who's got all the mediums possible, your bat charts, your object 140s, T62As, etc, your light tanks, if you find that the other team has them, they'll generally get the hill quicker. Moving on to Ardennes, it's getting a summer variant because why would you not update another variation of a port map, in my opinion, for people to drive about on? I may be the only person who thinks this, but it's not seen it in a very, very long time, along with Sacred Valley, if I'm perfectly honest. It's been an enjoyable experience. It's as enjoyable as you can get with people who decide to cap the flag when you're still winning the game and you know where all the enemy team are. Because reasons. Moving on to Redshire, it's getting a graphical update. Nothing uber special, and thankfully no weather variants to make gameplay so boring, but I won't hold my breath to it. But it's having some graphical improvements, so it might look nicer when you're driving around getting your ass handed to you by an M53 platoon, because why not? Oh, I'm not I'm not against artillery in any way. But now, we'll move on to some of the changes, this being uh, with the platoon UI. It's meant to be cleaner, more intuitive, and is also going to be something that will build upon too. Um, Maybe something will change in the future, but to be honest, the screenshots you can see here don't really show much on what we can actually see um, when it comes into play, so how you would physically access the menu just shows you what it looks like. Now we move on to the bread and butter, so to speak, the actual download size. All this cost of changes, the Xbox One is going to have a 36 gig update, the 360 is a 102 megabyte title update and 3.3 gig patch download, and the PS4 is on a 36.4 gig Quite hefty if I'm honest, so uh, get downloading before you play some tanks. Like if you're going out for a job or you're doing anything, just stick it on download. But now we'll move on to the premium tank vehicle buffs. There aren't very many of them, but there are some, some people would say questionable. I only have, uh, well technically two tanks in, in total. The Panther 88 is having its chassis rotation speed increase from 38 to 40, and its main gun, the pitch increase is going from 5 to 8, the horsepower is increased from 600 to 700. I rarely play this tank. It's not one I've used often at all in comparison to the other tier 8s I have. When I have like the T95E2 and the STA2 that have preferential matchmaking and are considerably better in every conceivable manner. Might not be a, as accurate gun, but it has armour. I don't see the point in it. Then we got the Panzer IV, what I will call the Schammelturm. I don't know if it's the case, but it's the uh, tier 6 medium. Obviously German. So shot dispersion is during the turret rotation or movement is being decreased from 0.2 to 0.15 for both the movement and rotation and the gun itself is having a shot dispersion during the turret rotation decreased from 0.6 or 0.16 to 0.11 the shot dispersion after the shot is decreased from 4 to 2 not played that tank but that's quite a big change if anyone does have that do let me know how you actually handle it and if you see any changes to it for the better now we get to the good stuff the Lever and the Lever Black Edition. <laughs> it's getting an increase in armor thickness of its upper from glaciers from 130 to 150 millimeters. I don't know why, but it is. Who shoots the upper front glaciers anyway? Let's be honest, what, what are you doing wrong with your life? Um, I, I assume in some respects it must have been something that's pending on a regular basis, but then if you're aiming at that point, you're kind of dumb. But there you go. Uh, it's matching match pitch is increased for its gun from 8 to 10 and the horsepower the horsepower is getting 200 bhp more it's going from 800 to 1000 so it's going to be one little fast little bastard that thing moving on to the 112 its chassis 
Shot dispersion during movement and the rotation is decreased from 0.25 for both to 0.23 for both. So very minimal, but it's 122mm is having its shot dispersion during the turret rotation decreased from 0.14 to 0.12. Don't have that tank myself, um, but I played the 110. I can't remember if the similarities are, are there with the, both of them, but minimal changes. Maybe they notice something that just needs to be tweaked. So I don't know if you'd notice very much by playing the 112 between the pre-buff and then the buff. And finally we're moving on to the STA2 and the black edition. It's getting a top speed increase from 45 to 55 kph. The chassis hull weight is being decreased from 11 155 to 10 955. What kind of difference that will make I don't know but I presume that they would have, have changed some stuff and tried it out because they've also increased the engine horsepower from 500 to 570. It's a fast little tank as it is so I'll, what I'll do is I'll play a game in it and then wait for the buff ones to come out and then play another game in it and see see if I notice the differences. I assume getting places quicker might be the one but overall it's still a very very good tank in terms of its ability to smash with its heat rounds with just ridiculous penetration but like I said well, I'll try and get a, um, a comparison on the go and see how they go. Additional features basically just starting with the UI, textures for vehicle icons and garage and the real tech tree. A new splash screen on the startup which is generally the case what they do with all the updates. Implemented sounds for the launch and minigame music. New FX for explosions and sparks. Art FX for the updated trees, leaves, waters, flowers, petals etc. So you like your little scorpions running around on the sand maps, you've got hummingbirds flying around in Redshire etc. Added countdown music for the wait after the map loads but before the battles start. Improved AI pathfinding. And co-op mode friendly AI will now pick up if health is low between below 25%. They are selecting or fixing some bugs. Selecting a player while in fly cam mode will now correctly attach the player's vehicle. Updated description and the brothers and arms pick to include consumables of recent nations. The proving grounds co-op adjustments to menu displays for the sake of clarity. And again, improving grounds updated messages when people leaving proving grounds battle early, so solo and co-op. Adjusted the 542 military emblem to be more visible. Added asterisks on the Maybach engine names, the E50 and the E75, to clarify it's different than the GWE100. And mitigated performance hitches on all consoles. I presume that might be something to do with the lag itself. But if you're having lag in the game, I blame your ISP. If, if, even if you've got perfect internet, I blame your ISP. Whatever kind of complaints you got about the game, blame your ISP. Because it's always going to be your ISP. So that's pretty much the update that's coming out now. It's not a, a massive one. They're still coming out at 3.8. So I presume a lot of it is to do with the maps, but maybe they're actually doing a little bit more underneath that they're not putting up. But we'll see how things go. Hopefully you liked the video, and if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I shall see you guys later.